Hey guys, it's Jasper here from Funtime Shorts. I'm going to do a quick tutorial on how to get the 40mm Panavision Primo Anamorphic Lens look, as well as the classic film look. If you're interested in learning about the history of the anamorphic look, as well as how it works, you should check out Filmmaker IQ's video, The Changing Shape of Cinema, The History of the Aspect Ratio. I have to credit Vashi Nidomansky for coming up with this bezer warp distortion technique that I'm going to use. If you're interested, I'm going to provide the project file along with the presets in the description below. First off, you'll need to make sure you film your footage with this effect in mind. NoFilmSchool.com recommends you use a full-frame camera with a 28mm or 35mm lens. APS-C cameras use a 20mm or 24mm, or BMCCs use a 10mm or 12mm lens. Next, you'll need to frame your shot correctly, with the 2.35 aspect ratio in mind. If you make a mistake, you can always pan the footage up or down in post since we were cropping it anyways, but it's best to get it right the first time. Here we have a few photos I took in Ireland. As you can see, they all are pretty wide angle photos. I have effects applied to them. They kind of look like they have a film look to them. And they all have a distortion. So I only have one adjustment layer applied to all these things. As you can see, this is just the original photo, no color correction applied. Um, and then let's just dive in to see what I did here. First thing I did is use Vashimorphic 40mm uh, bezer warp preset. Uh, you can find this at nofilmschool.com, and I'll also provide a preset with everything I do in it, including that. Um, and it's just bezer warp with specific distortion values applied to it. As you can see, if we didn't have the crop, it would look very barrel distorted. But let's compare this to the actual um, optics compensation plugin. Oops. As you can see, the original barrel distort looks something like this. And that's not the exact same thing. So if we compare Vashimorphic 40 to this, you can see that the edges are also being distorted, but in the 40mm lens that we're trying to emulate, there isn't that type of distortion. So it's very important that we use the bezer warp to do this. The next, I just added a simple vignette. I used the original vignette that they uh, recommended, which is CIA Vignette, and that's a simple plugin, but you can also just make your own or use your own plugin, depending on what you prefer. And just a very small vignette um, that helps to give it more of a cinematic look. Next was the FEC Gradient Blur, and that replaces the original one that they recommended, which is actual separate adjustment layer. So you can make your own gradient blur as well and just blur the edges. There are plenty of ways to do this, but just for the ease of having a single plugin do it, this is what I chose. And then the next is a bit more complicated. It's I made this myself. It's a modified version of the barn doors effect that uh, transition wipe and what it does is it just gives it that aspect ratio and crops the edges automatically and then here we have color correction I use a sapphire film effect which is a paid plugin but you can always do your own film effects I'm actually going to go over later in the tutorial how to do this without sapphire and then some simple hue and saturation and curves to give it more of a contrasty washed out look so here we have a blank comp with just a single image and the first thing we're going to do is color correct it. So I'm going to drag in curves, see if we can get some nice contrast going. I'm going to take the red and I am going to give it nice contrast in the red, the green, and then the blue. In the blue, I do, I subtract contrast to give it more of a yellow tone. Then I go to hue and saturation, and I go to yellows, and I actually bring down the yellow saturation. And this is to give it more of a washed out look because film handles colors differently. So I want to bring out the greens. Uh, Bring out the blues, maybe make them a bit darker. Magentas. Uh, 
Okay. Now I'm going to add some film grain, and I can just use the regular grain, um, or noise filter that comes with After Effects for um, default, and this noise works pretty well. We can do just a little bit amount of noise, and this, uh, maybe remove color noise, just to get that effect. And this does make it look like it's on film, and it's pretty good. But I, if you have the plugin, I usually go for the sapphire, um, I usually go for the sapphire film effect. And here you can choose different Kodak, uh, negatives and print films. Let's see what I used here, just to save time. I used the Kodak 5248 and the 2383. So you just fill with the effect until you get it right. Uh, here's the final effect with the Sapphire Film Effect, and I'm going to use this from the rest of the tutorial, but you can always use whatever works for you best, um, just to get the basic color correction. And that's about all you need for the film look. Remember that if you want to get it at 24 frames per second, you can always just change it in post, but it's best to shoot at 24 frames per second. So your camera can do that, shoot at 24 frames per second. But since it's an image, it doesn't really matter what frames per second the comp is at. Next, I will be using my anamorphic preset. Right here, you can download it, put it in your folder. So I purposely did this. As you can see, it put it in that little tiny box there, and you might be wondering, why would it do that? And that's because I don't have my project set at 1080p. As you can see, it's a much higher resolution because my picture was at a higher resolution. So we need to change that to 1080. And you can actually fiddle with the bezel warp to fix this. But in order to do that, it takes a lot of guess and check and math. So I usually just scale down my images to 1080p. And then I apply on an adjustment layer the anamorphic look. And there we have it. The basic distortion basic distortion for the image now what we're going to do is since in case you don't have in case you don't have the CI vignette or the FEC gradient blur I'm going to show you how to do that right now we're going to create a new adjustment layer and we're going to change this to the ellipse tool and just double click it as you can see, it automatically made an ellipse the size of our comp. Next, we're going to go to Masks, and we're going to check Inverted. And the first thing I'm going to do is go to Curves. And just apply a little bit of contrast, make it a little bit darker. And then I'm going to apply a Fast Blur. And you can use whatever works for the comp. I usually go for three pixels with repeat edge pixels enabled and then you go to feather just push F and you want to feather it to make it look like it is just part of the lens to make it look natural sometimes you might want to actually make the mass expansion go in a bit to just get more of the comp to be darkened and that's looking pretty good so Right there, we have the entire thing. The this all this entire uh, distortion and cropping it uses plugins that come with After Effects, and these are also plugins that come with After Effects. So as you can see, you can get the entire effect with default plugins and very little uh, on a very low budget. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, uh, it was a very simple one at that, but hopefully I can do more advanced tutorials soon. Um, if you have an idea for a tutorial you'd like me to do, please leave a comment below, or any questions about this tutorial, and uh, if you enjoy this video, subscribe and like it, if you know you want to see more, and that'll be it.